What's up guys, Aeronius here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. In today's video, I'm going to be pulling shards on the boosted summons event here on my pay to win account and my free to play account. So let's get it. All right, so first I'm on my pay to win account. We're going to start here. We've got the boosted summon event going on for all of these champions here and the top champions are directly behind me here in Duchess and Underpriest Brogni, also Elva Autumnborn as well as Maneater. So a great time to pull shards but obviously if you're early game or mid game and you don't have that many shards to begin with then don't pull right now unless you're going for Pytheon. So the summon rush right now is going on during the Pytheon event. And um, so you could potentially get other good champions alongside with potentially getting Pytheon. The issue with this event, though, is simply that they really kind of screwed us over in this event where they made it so it's like 5,000 points almost just to get the 15 fragments. So it might make or break some people's account, which is very unfortunate. But hopefully you guys saved enough resources to be able to do this. Now, that being said, let's get into this. I want to make this a quicker video. I will be doing a bunch of 10 pops here. So first we'll do our first eight here. I do want Under Priest Brogni and I do want Duchess on the pay to win account. I don't have either of them yet on the pay to win account, but I did recently pull Duchess on the free to play account. So I will say now though, on my free to play account, I've already pulled my shards. So after I pull my shards on the pay to win account, it's just going to be a quick video from my cell phone uh, of pulling my shards and I actually got some good new champions. So that one I hope hopefully you guys do like the, the free to play account summons that I have after the pay to win. But I'm really hoping for at least four legendaries on the pay to win with the amount of shards that I have. And I, I really really want under priest Brogni. The guy's phenomenal. I also wouldn't mind getting Duchess as well of course. She's a little bit better than under priest Brogni in certain content but under priest Brogni is just ridiculous in clan boss and that's why i want him all right so let's do this we're gonna start doing our 10 pops i have plenty of room i have plenty of silver so let's do this we're just gonna oh right there right off the bat not under priest Brogni. okay we got hackhorn smash lord actually a really good champion he does have a nice removes all debuffs so he's a cleanser um he's not super heavy hitting he hits somewhat hard but I don't think he's the best champion for legendary, but he is good. He is a great cleanser, so he could do decent damage. I just don't see many content creators personally make videos on him, but let's keep going. It wasn't any of the 10x, so that kind of stinks. Bunch of rares. Come on, we do want we want one of the 10x. That's what we're here for. Jareg, very strong champion, pretty much everywhere in the game. Very good for faction wars. Here we go. What the heck? <laughs> Hackhorn Smash Lord, and then his brother, Longbeard. Oh my gosh, so this is the ally attacker. He's actually insane for blender comps, insane for um, other content in the game as well, where, where he ignores shield and block damage, which is nice. Uh, crit rate in dungeons. I wish this was just crit rates in all battles. That would have been a lot better. But uh, he does have a weaken as well. He can be really good in clan boss as well with the ally attack. He also can be really good in... Um, he could be actually exceptional in Doom Tower boss, which is Bommel, uh, now that we have the new Nishak fusion. And there was a video created by YST, and I think where he did ally attackers, and, and Nishak just put a bunch of bombs on Bommel and wiped him out in literally like two turns or three turns, something like that. It was crazy. Uh, and he killed the boss in under like a minute. It's pretty insane. All right, so we're going to keep going here. We got pretty much nothing else here so far, but we, we are two legendaries in, and that's not bad. But again, still no 10x. 10x is, seems to be a scam. Uh, Occult Brawler, very good clan boss champion. Pretty decent in Faction Wars as well. Uh, Sir Artemage, nobody really talks highly of him. He's like an average champion. Bunch of rares. We're going to keep going here. Come on, can we get a legendary? Another legendary, I mean. We've already got one. <laughs> we actually got two. But we do want Under Priest Brogni. Uh, Geomancer, very, very strong. Thoresk, uh, Mirag, Tashada. Tashada is a good reviver. For an epic, that is. Hellgazer, she's still garbage. I'm surprised they haven't done a buff for Hellgazer. Hopefully, she's in one of the buffs soon. 
buff patches. Come on. Okay, how many we have left? 60 left. We're going to keep going here. Come on, give us a legendary that is under priest or duchess, please. Crimson Helm, good for soloing, I believe. Or Barmel. Okay. All right. Still. Don't tell me we're going to go through all of these ones with only the two legendaries and no 10x. I've been saving these bad boys up. Okay, I think this is the last pull unless I have one more after this. Okay. Uh, Sepulcher Sentinel. I think she's part of the 10x, which she is. That's the first 10x champion that we pulled out of 200 shards, 200 plus shards. I think it was 218 total. So two legendaries out of the 218 ancients, which is not bad odds considering it's only a, uh, it's not a two times chance, right? So it's not 1% chance. It's only 5.5% chance to get a legendary from the ancients. Now we're going on to the sacred. So I'm really hoping for two legendaries from the sacreds as well. And again, we just want under priest or duchess and we off the bat. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on now. I already pulled a Nethril. Uh, that's annoying. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Nethril's a decent champion, though. Another one! Is this thing on? Is 10x on? Alright, Samson. Actually, um, I've seen a couple people utilize him as content creators. They create a couple videos on him. Um, he is a pretty decent champion. Attacks all enemies, removes all increased defense, but unfortunately you need accuracy to do that. Increase accuracy, increase crit damage on everybody. Uh, also places increased crit damage on this champion. So not increase crit damage on the allies, just on himself. And then grants an extra turn, so he goes right into this one. So place increased accuracy on everybody, then go into another turn, and then attack all enemies. That's not bad. And then decreases the damage this champion receives from critical hits by 20%. Counterattacks the attacker when hit with a critical. That's not a bad ability. This guy is actually pretty solid for a go second team. Like, really solid. Increased defense in all battles as well. So, not a bad champ. Alright, we'll keep going. We already got two legendaries. Like, that was kind of nice back to back. But still no 10x. Brock in the fat. Exceptional in clan boss. Pretty, near, pretty much anywhere else in the game. For progression. Alright, we've got to get a 10x legendary here. What's going on? We got four legendaries, no 10x. What's happening here? Mordecai, very, very good for spiders. Very good burner for an epic. Uh, blood soaked. Or Baroth, the blood soaked. He's an okay damage dealer. He's not that great. We've got no Gorio. He was a fusion epic that I failed to get on my free to play because I fell asleep. And forgot to complete the Dungeon Divers event. Fun stuff. Alright, are we going to go all 20 now? The rest of the 20 without a Legendary? Let's see. So that's 9 so far. We got Mycelliac Priest Orn, which is the... He can solo Dragon 20. Okay. Woad Painted. I think he got a... He got nerfed though, so he can't do Dragon 25. If I'm not mistaken. Unless he still can. Leave it in the comments down below. Let me know. But I, I think he got nerfed to the point where he can only solo Dragon 20. Instead of Dragon 25. Come on. That's 13 in a row with no legendary. 14. Okay, this is one of the 10x champions. Quargon the Crowned. So we're getting the epics. But we're not getting the legendary 10x. Come on. Right, that's 15. This will be 16. 16 with no legendary. Okay, another 10x except another epic 10x. Mausoleum Mage. So I've gotten all the epic 10x's at this point. Okay, Soul Drinker, very good bomb champion. Don't sleep on Soul Drinker. There we go. Come on. Dang it. <laughs> I wanted Under Priest Brogni. All right, Kira the Watcher. Uh, decrease attack on the A1, decrease accuracy, and uh, chance of decreasing the duration of all enemy buffs. So she needs accuracy. 
Ally protection with increased defense. Not bad. Whenever an ally is attacked under ally protection, faces a decreased attack. Wow, that's actually very strong. She would be an insane clan boss champion. Look at the shield on that bad boy. She looks pretty fire, too. Look at the hair. It like, wraps around her in the front. Kind of neat. Can't see her face, though, but... This is actually a good champion. Very good champion for protection. Very good progressive-based champion. Um, five. That's five legendaries. And, unfortunately, not a single one was a 10x legendary. That's sad to see, but we did get a bunch of the epics for the 10x. Five legendaries, guys, on the pay-to-win account. And not a single one was a 10x legendary. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and roll the clip for the free-to-play account. We actually got something good on the free-to-play account. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm just gonna roll that clip, and I am talking in the clip. Now, there are some mic issues there because it's on my cell phone. So apologies that the, um, the mic isn't that great on my cell phone. But thank you guys so much for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel on your way out, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. What's up, guys? Uh, I am just going to be pulling shards for the Boosted Summons event, and I am doing it on my cell phone. So I'm hoping I can get an Under Priest Brogni. That's the goal. Or a Duchess, of course. I already have a Duchess on my free-to-play account, which is the account that I'm on right now. But having a Under Priest Brogni would be insane he's so good he's so op honestly in this game and he would create more avenues for me especially in clan boss because then if i got krisk one day could do a crazy infinity comp but with him you could already do big compositions without having to deal with an unkillable team if you have him on your clan boss so amazing champion and then of course those who are trying to pull their void shards you could get man eater I mean, he's an insane champion as well. So if you are considering going for these 10x champs, just know that it's not a two times chance to get them. It's only a 10x chance. So you don't have a, t a two times chance to summon, which means the sacreds are only 6%, not 12%. Voids are 0.5, not 1%, so on and so forth. So good luck on your pulls. I am going to be pulling my sacred shards here because we do have the summon rush going on. And I think it's an event. Yeah, so it is the event. It's really irritating, though, because the fragments, the 15 fragments, are at almost 5,000 points. So that's insane. That's going to be really difficult for most play most of the player base. Um, the top, like, 20% of the player base, for example, like myself, since I'm a level 100 on this free-to-play account, I've been playing for years. Of course I'm going to get it because I do Ultra Nightmare. And I do it every day, so I get a sacred shard sometimes. So I have nine sacred shards saved. Now, also keep in mind that I believe next week or the week afterwards, we may have a two times sacred event. So if you aren't going for this champion, Pytheon, then consider saving your shards and not going for him um, and just save. And don't even worry about going for Under Priest Brogni or Duchess as well, because you could get two times chance or there could potentially be an event for you pull one shard and you get another legendary or you pull one legendary you get another legendary for free so be mindful of that i think that they're going to do that next week it's very possible that they will they do it pretty often on these crazy events where they have these crazy champions and then next week they're like oh by the way we have a get one legendary get another one for free so keep that in mind as well all right here we go i'm really hoping for something good I need Under Priest Brogni. Come on. Please give me Under Priest. Uh, we got Masked Fearmonger. He did get a buff to his damage. He's still not that great. He's okay, though, if you want to use him in Faction Wars. Some beginner to mid game content. Candlehead, Carlinia. Uh, she's okay. She does have an HP burn on the A1. Decrease attack on all enemies. The de debuff cannot be resisted against targets under HP burn, so that's not bad. Decrease the duration of all debuffs on all allies. So she's actually a pretty good champion. Every time an enemy under HP burn debuff gets a turn, decreases the duration of two random buffs on them by one turn. That's actually really good. And then increase ally resistance by 35. That's not that great. I would have preferred to her to have uh, increased accuracy. 
Let's keep going. Got seven left. Come on. Okay, now we got the spade man. He's going to dig your grave. Six left. There we go. Ah, Molly Tankard. Okay, still a great champion. Um, she's fantastic. She's one of those champions, I believe, that she is in the guardian ring where you can pull her to unbind. Yeah, so she's 3,000 if you want to try to unbind your old champions. She's actually a very good champion in general. Um, she does have that amazing passive, so she's new for me. Fills all the turn meters of allies by 15% whenever she's hit. Fills the turn meters of all allies by 25% when this champion's hit by a boss. So she's fantastic against Magma Dragon. And she can't, um, of course, provoke any other bosses in the game besides Magma Dragon. But she's also insane on arena defense, especially for tag team, if you can build her with crazy speed and crazy accuracy and build her somewhat tanky. She also has the block damage reviving one ally, placing a block damage on them, 50% HP, 50% turn meter. So she's not bad, and she can do somewhat decent damage too. But the Provoke is really her biggest skill. So not a bad champion, good support-based champion. But it's definitely not any of the 10x. Um, I would have even preferred to have Elva Autumnborn over her personally. That's just me. I got five more though. There's a chance that I could get another legendary. Okay, we got an epic, visionary, older epic. Come on. Another epic, mausoleum mage. I believe he is part of the 10x. Great champion for early, mid, and late game content. Um, I wouldn't say he's end game, but definitely late game. You could use him in end game content if you have great gear on him. Another epic. All right, another Vogoth. So that's like my fourth Vogoth. <laughs> I already have two built, maxed out. Very, very good champion for support and end game content as well. There's another one. <gasps> and the person that I just spoke about, Elva Autumnborn. That is phenomenal. Um, she's a great champion. Uh, she's kind of similar to, I guess you could say, Duchess a little bit. Not fully, because she doesn't like block damage, but. She also revives the target ally with 40% HP, 50% turn meter, places the increased defense and increased attack on them for two turns. 75% chance of removing all debuffs from all allies, places block debuffs and a 30% increased speed. So she's a cleanser. And uh, places a 15% continuous heal buff for two turns on the ally with the lowest HP. And passive. Heals each ally by 10% of their max HP at the start of their turn. Places a perfect veil buff for one turn on the ally with the lowest HP at the end of this champion's turn. You definitely want to build her very fast, very tanky, for support based. And I guess if you can do it, you definitely don't need any accuracy. Yeah, so you don't need any accuracy on her, so you can try to put a lot of resistance on her too. So she could be a very good cleanser on your team. I was really hoping for Underpriest Bogni. We do have one more shard. Come on, what can we get here? Another epic. Okay, Sepulchre Sentinel. Also another 10x champion, I believe. Yeah, so actually not bad on the rates and not bad on the 10x chance to get those champions. That wasn't bad at all. I do have eight ancients, which I could try to pull for. I may end up doing that. Let me just see where I'm at right now for the summon rush. So we're very close. We only need about 400 points, just a little bit under to get the 15 fragments. So that's not bad. So I will go ahead and pull my Ancients just to see if we can get another shot at Under Priest Brogni. A very, very good champion. Also, this these champions are gonna be utilized for food for the champion training that's going on right now as well. So if I don't get them, I don't get them. I think I'm gonna go ahead and save my Void Shards though. I don't really care about the Man Eater. I do have one Man Eater. Okay, let's see what we get here. Come on, something good. And last one. 
Nada. Okay. I guess that is what it is. I'll have to just keep pulling next time for Under Priest Brogni. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great one. Peace.